Now, purple loosestrife is a pretty plant, but what it does to wetlands is pretty ugly. It chokes out most of the other vegetation around it. Every species has a role to play in nature. And just as human diversity is vital to social systems, biodiversity is vital to ecosystems. For example, beekeepers love purple loosestrife because it provides lots of nectar for bees to make their honey. But ecologists don't like it because it destroys biodiversity. Invasive species often take up so many resources that there aren't enough left for the native species to survive. Scientists believe that purple loosestrife also came to the United States on a ship. This time, the ship came from the Middle East. And instead of insects hiding in the packing material, it was probably just a few loose seeds sloshing around in the ship's hold. When the bilge was pumped from the ship, plant material made its way to our shores and purple loosestrife thrives along American waterways. On the IPM Pyramid of Tactics, there aren't any cultural approaches. Purple loosestrife is already here, well established, and growing in the wild. In terms of physical mechanical controls, there is weeding or burning, but this isn't always a cost-effective option, since purple loosestrife lives off the beaten path. It's sometimes tough to get to in remote or marshy areas. Chemical controls are a problem because loosestrife is usually so close to waterways. We always want to keep chemicals away from aquatic habitats and drinking water whenever possible. There are, however, some pretty decent biological controls available. The purple loosestrife that you see behind me uh, is, is a very invasive weed species that we've been battling in, in Pennsylvania for a number of years. Uh, it is a wetland, mainly a wetland area plant, but it has begun to move or, or encroach into agricultural land affecting crops. So uh, one reason we, my agency, got involved with uh, the biocontrol for loosestrife was because of that encroachment into cropland. In the purple loosestrife program, we have uh, three different uh, insects that we release in, the, in our biocontrol program. The major one uh, is Gala rucella. It is a leaf-feeding weevil, or beetle rather, that we uh, Rear, either rear in laboratories in several locations in the U.S. or else they're field collected. Uh, the collections are shipped overnight to uh, mail, uh, kept in a cooler with, uh, with a cold pack. Uh, at that point, uh, we take them to specific sites that we've chosen because of the amount of loose strife that's present. Uh, we take these canisters of insects and we release them onto the plants and they feed immediately and uh, hopefully will begin breeding and, and reproducing and the goal is to establish what we call an insectary so that uh, we can come back and harvest uh, that particular beetle from the location and spread to other sites that, that uh, do not have them. So how do you make sure you're not using a bug that eats all kinds of plants? The species that we use for uh, the loose stripe program are very specific. Uh, for for Gala rucella and, and, and the other two that we utilize, uh, about 200 different 280 different species of insects were screened and tested to make sure that they did not feed on other plants. Uh, the three that we use, as I mentioned, are very specific to loose strife and will not feed on any other plant that we know of. Biocontrol for my agency is, is one of the many tools that we use to help uh, control invasive species. Uh, Biocontrol is one of those tools in which we release uh, a good insect, if you will, to, to combat a bad insect or a weed in this case, as we're talking purple loosestrife. Uh, it is not a cure-all. It does not completely control a weed or another pest, but it is one of, the, one of the tools that helps do so. So do the good bugs really do the trick? The beetles that we're releasing uh, on loosestrife have been effective, uh, again, as part of an IPM program. They're, they're only effective to a certain degree. Uh, we have seen stands that are about seven or eight years old where we released beetles that many years back that have about a 25 to, to 35 percent control. Uh, again, it's other measures you have to use to completely get rid of loose strife along with the biocontrol. But doesn't it get expensive having to buy and ship all those bugs? My agency views biocontrol as an important tool because it is a, it, it, it's an economical tool in a way. It, it does not completely control a pest, an invasive species, but it is, it is part of the complex that we use in an integrated pest management system 
along with chemicals, cultural practices. The biocontrol fills in the gap. It's long term. Uh, the insects will be out here for many, many years uh, doing their job. And it, it helps to keep a population of weeds such as purple loosestrife in check. Cool. Well, thanks, Gary. I like those beetles a lot better than that longhorn fella. But if you turn me loose, I'm not sure I'd hang around a bunch of purple loosestrife. Give me the road anytime. I'm getting bug driving up and down the same old strip. I'm getting bug driving up and down the same old strip. I love that. Hey, why so blue? <laughs> I love that joke.